Hi everyone, welcome to today we have a new show, a new name, Happy Fun Beyond Earth. Welcome, yeah. Scott. <laughs> yeah. Perry and I were talking about a lot of things before we started the recording for the show. This show, with Perry's co kind cooperation, takes courage. She had choices to make some time ago to go in this direction or continue to do what she was doing, which would have been negative somewhat. And now there's nothing we're doing that's negative at all. How, why do we do it? Why do we choose to do this? Do I have to do shows like this? No. Does she know? There's no gun to our head. There's no super being somewhere that says we must do this. We do it because we're motivated to do something that will help transform this planet without it being self-destroyed by the mostly subconsciously fear-driven personalities of people on earth today. Just means that unconsciously, subconsciously, their decisions are based on some form of fear of the present or the future or both. The only outcome from that can be negative. There cannot be a positive outcome from a negative output. So this is all about getting enough energy of a certain rare kind, rare in that it's not very prevalent on earth yet, into the atmosphere of this planet and under the feet of people on earth so they can awaken enough to remember they never originated here, they aren't the body they're running, and they have a destiny. These are the three things that are most important. It's not about money. It's not about fame or fortune. You can't take any of that with you anyway. So it's about why we're here, how we came to be on Earth, and what we once knew before we were compelled to be here without our free will involved. I don't care whether this is controversial to people that are stuck fixated in some belief system. And this doesn't fit their belief system. They believe that it's God's will that they're here with no memory, dumber than bricks. Living one life and they can't remember anything and they think that's normal because it makes them feel good, but it isn't normal. It's not normal at all. Because earth people on earth don't have, they don't grow up being able to compare how life is and humans on other worlds with this planet. And it's very different. How do you do that? How do you bridge that for people on earth that have been brainwashed since birth and their parents before them and governments before them to stay fixated in the atmosphere of this planet with no awareness much of anything outside? Here's a primary trap. The speed of light, you can't go faster than the speed of light because you turn into energy and you can't do it. Somebody made that up, thought it was a good idea. It's not provable, it's theory. You cannot prove light only goes 286,000 plus miles per second. That's just what physical eyes can detect. There's no limits to the speed of light because light is not what people think it is on earth. It is the energy that's out in space that all things float in. That big black void out there, it isn't black at all. To you, out of body, looking at it, not with these eyes, which are limited, you can see it for what it is. So more advanced races who know how to do this and travel the stars know how to have a relationship with that one omnipresent living force right outside the atmosphere of Earth that supports everything. It isn't nuclear. It's not atomic. It's not DNA. It's not molecules. It's not atoms. It's much finer. It's the energy behind that. What people on Earth now call zero-point or toroidal energy, the energy of the universe, is a living force, just like we are, in it. So more advanced races that have figured out how to work in harmony with that energy can get around to other stars and other galaxies vastly beyond what they think the speed of light is. Some people say, well, the light came from galaxies far, far away, billions of years ago. And the light we're seeing now, we're seeing those galaxies as they were a billion years ago. No, that's not right. It's completely wrong. They're putting their own limited consciousness based on fear upon something that cannot be limited in that way. And they lock themselves to earth, can't go faster than the speed of light, so they don't develop or understand the technology that's required to do that because they don't believe it can be done. It's as simple as that. Until they drop that load of baggage, 
They can't be taught anything new from that omnipresent force that's out there. Other races and other worlds have done this. They know how to do it. They can share that with people on earth, but people on earth would just abuse it. Attack their neighbor, blow things up, make weapons. What people on earth do not yet realize, and all of the extraterrestrial UFO communities, everything on this planet, most of them don't yet realize that space is already occupied by more advanced races. And we are not gonna be allowed to play in it like they think we are, bringing our garbage out there and throwing it up on everybody. Fighting for the spoils of other planets is never going to happen, ever. And people on earth do not yet know this because it's classified way up high. There are people on earth who understand this. They're afraid to tell the public. And yet they're being told they have to do this. Disclosure is not what people in disclosure community believe it is. Much, much, much deeper than that. So how do you have full disclosure on a planet of unconscious people, fellow beings who are afraid to accept their responsibility as a co-creator with the source behind all life? They're afraid to do it. The deepest primordial fear predominantly governing people on earth is they're afraid to accept their responsibility in eternity. That's it. That goes back billions of years in many lives on many worlds, most of them not even on this planet. And yet people on earth living today aren't aware of this anymore. They aren't aware that races that are represented on this planet right now never evolved here. Not out of the primordial swamps, not out of Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, or dinosaurs that became, you know, extinct and then fish and they started walking like humans. No. Humans never evolved on this planet in the first place. They're much more ancient than this planet. <laughs> What's going to happen when people on Earth finally get disclosed the truth of this? Because people in the highest levels of classification on this planet barely scratch the surface of understanding that this is true. So how are we going to play among the stars if we can't play nice? <clears throat> so this solar system is quarantined. Not by us, not by people on Earth. And it's not quarantined by nasty, vindictive, evil, spacefaring races, no. It's quarantined to keep us from going out among the stars and fighting and destroying things like we do on Earth. We are never going to be allowed to play in space like people think we are, the way they are right now. I don't care who's running one rocket ships outside of this atmosphere. They're never going to be allowed to play out there, truly, until this world changes for the better. Because we're going to have to be respectful of the life that can meet us and give us their technology, even their spirituality. I mean, the ability to live thousands of years and run a body and not be stuck in it, wouldn't that be a great thing? Do you think that if beings were awake enough to know they're not a body and they're running it right now, that they would overpopulate this planet? No. So think about it. What people do now on Earth is based on subconscious fear. Subconscious meaning negative programs that influence their nervous system to imagine certain ways that are ne more negative than positive, a little more on the fear side than positive. So this living energy out there is a co-creator with us, this energy of the universe. And it will bring into manifestation this one omnipresent power, whatever we imagine, good or bad or both. And if you look at the conditions of earth right now, people have created a pretty backward, unharmonious society of countries and religious beliefs that just don't get along. They just don't. When we get outside of have some fun off, like we're talking about this new title, instead of hidden truth, maybe it could be something like having fun beyond earth, exploring hidden truth or something like that. Or fun beyond earth to shorten it up, right? Because it's a nice, simple title. Probably would attract a lot of people. But it wouldn't be about mindless entertainment. No. It would be about helping them recover what they were made to forget long ago. Before they found themselves on this planet with little or no former memory intact. 
That's not normal. Just like the moon that circles our planet without turning on its axis is not normal. That's not normal either. I'm sure there's a few scientists on Earth, probably the highest, most classified, that have brushed shoulders with some very vast extraterrestrial races that understand this. Okay, but they don't know how to communicate it with their fellows or get it out to the public. It's too over their head. It's too far removed from the way that we're brought up. Oh, the speed of light is only this fast. Absurd. Light just can go up through different dimensions and parallels as one energy on different vibrational levels, supporting at different molecular time rates of molecules and atoms. But it's the energy that powers that stuff. It isn't the stuff itself that it powers. And it can go off into the astral plane where the speed of light is many times greater than what they think it is on Earth and so forth up through the dimensions. How does somebody go to another galaxy and visit friends in Andromeda? If they think the speed of light is a limit, you can't, you'll never get there in a billion years. You'll never make it. You're gonna stay going at this speed because you can't go faster. Somebody made that up and threw that up on the public because they thought it was a good idea. It was all they could detect with their physical eyes. Says, oh, that's what all it is. No. How is it that ships come here from thousands of light years away and they don't have this problem? How can people be so dumbed down on earth to know that craft are coming here and yet they say we can't go fast enough to do that? It is the height of ignorance. And it's ignorant in that they refuse to see what's right in front of them when it's shown them over and over again. They still want to have their little petty governments and squabbles, which they all know will end in the annihilation of life on this planet. Always does. No exception. You cannot be like the people are on this planet and not destroy yourself sooner or later, unless something from beyond this earth intervenes enough to cares enough to change it. That's what this work is about. So we can have fun exploring beyond earth. Why not? What we're doing here that I don't take for granted, but that is effortless for me, seems like an impossible, miraculous thing to people on earth who don't even know they're not one of these. They don't know if this gets immortalized or gets taken up to heaven when it dies or somehow gets recreated out of dust, out of worm food. No, it's not about bodies. It never has been. There's not a living being running a body on earth that is a body or has ever been one, ever. That's how far down the scale of awareness people have dropped on this planet. And this is just one planet amongst hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of space-faring races in our galaxy alone. So how do we have fun, Perry? Let's throw some things around and see how we can have. Well, fun is good if it's not mindless entertainment. Nicole, we go on the journey. That's how we can have fun. I never charged fees or money for what I do here, so it's probably not very well known. But that's, that's with the private work, okay? I do private work with a few people, as you know, 10 or 15 out of a whole planet. And we go out beyond this atmosphere of this planet and we explore the multiverse. And we do it all the time. The radio show we're doing here, that's what we're calling it, does that too. It's for the public. How many people are even aware it's up on your YouTube channel of the populace of this planet? Very few. And if they cross paths with it, would they recognize the open door to freedom it represents or pass on it for a more mindless entertainment full of both negative and positive fear of the present and future, which will just trap them here? How do you get people to know the difference? There is one. So I'm asking you. I don't say it enough, Scott from going on many, many journeys with you from 2017 and now it's 2022. I have changed so much and a lot, you know, and the life is much easier and happier and calmer. This add more and more experience outside the 
planet Earth this, I would say. So everyone who is listening to our show, please, you know, just keep doing, go on the journey, read Scott's books, you know. I current, I can guarantee you, if you do like this, your experience will come, your awakening part will come to you. Definitely, this is all I can say. It takes some awakened, suppressed courage to step across the threshold to determine for oneself not to use the imagination in negative ways. The th conscious awareness of why that is important. Because if that doesn't wake up in a person, they have no chance in hell of waking up anything while they live out their life here. You cannot become enlightened through negative imagination. It's impossible. It creates repercussions in space-time that are negative. It's one of the basic laws of the physical universe. It's also one of the basic laws of the astral causal mental and etheric planes below the void that some esoteric groups know exists far above all that. And there are many higher levels above that void. And if people don't know it and they're never taught it and they're never mentioned it, they're never gonna imagine it, never gonna think about it and they will never get there. They'll never return to where they came from long ago. And our destiny is to go back there while we're running bodies, not stuck in them, not trapped by them, see? So I've never really, um, as you know, I've never charged any fee or money for the private things we do that the world doesn't even know are going on, except a few people. I don't charge per se myself money for these radio shows. I don't monetize the videos because that's a trap that just makes some big company rich using everybody else's little videos to sponsor people who pay them millions, even billions of dollars to do that. I don't do that. I'm not against or for it. I just don't participate because I'm not interested in monetizing this work. That just puts it under the control of people who don't know what they're doing and are stuck on this planet. Accumulating stuff they know they can't take with them in a short period, few years, and yet they won't change. So the world is in the condition it's in right now because people refuse to allow the energy of the universe that is one living energy force we call zero point of energy to come into their lives in a conscious way. They keep it blocked out out of fear. They wanna run their own little egotistical empires until the world can no longer be lived on by people like us. And if that happened, it wouldn't be the first time this planet's gone through this with human beings. There's been a nuclear war on this planet so far back in history, it's not even known by people on earth today how far back in history that is. Dinosaurs were made extinct 65 million years ago. What's happened in all those millions of years? Where's that history? There's nobody on earth today that knows it. And if they do, they're not talking about it because people would fight them to hold on to their little petty, inconsequential little belief systems about history that are not true. So tiny a fraction is what is known here today. It isn't even relevant. And what is taught in schools, for the most part, are tyrant cultures that existed in the past from Rome, Mayan, Yucatan, uh, Sumerian, Egyptian, tyrant kings and queens all. That's history. That's the history people are taught here. Is it any wonder they grow up afraid of the present and the future? Hmm. So when we go on these journeys, like this show we're doing now. Once we get a few ground thing, groundwork, some groundwork out of the way about number one, we aren't the forms we run on this planet. They are genetic entities uh, made up of DNA, which is made by higher scientists long ago in galactic history to be able to allow a higher being, not the body, to run higher faculties of co-creativity with the source through this form. People have long forgotten that on this planet. 
So things are changing out in the universe now for the first time in hundreds of billions of years. And that doesn't originate from the physical universe as people understand it. It originates from much higher realities. There are certainly scientists in quantum physics that really know there are other dimensions, they just don't know how to access them. They know they're there. They just don't know how to do it. What's about, how do you do that? Well, you can't do that effectively if you're a tyrant government or a selfish government or a this or that or religion or anything else because the negative nature of that blocks it's a negative field that blocks the conscious awareness from coming into people on this earth the atmosphere on earth is very polluted let's say with negative emotion and imagination going back to the time after the dinosaurs were made extinct, when beings lived here from many worlds at different times and different epochs, grand man mantars or grand ages of time. People hear about the golden age to iron age in some circles on earth, goes in a cycle and comes back to a golden age. But that's a series that takes place for a planet that has polar flips only. Until recently, this planet flipped its poles every 100,000 years like clockwork. That's changed the first time. So that people on Earth have an opportunity to live in a culture for hundreds of millions of years, per se, per se uh, without the poles flipping and creating massive destruction all over the world. Nobody survives that. The great biblical flood, or let's go back further than that idea to a change in the entire surface of the planet overnight. Then there's an ice age. <laughs> it's not what people think. So you might ask, you know, um, how does Scott know this stuff? Scott didn't learn it on earth. Scott couldn't learn it on earth. It's not on earth. You have to get outside the planet with beings who have recorded all this, who know what it was and show it to you or you have to go see it for yourself. I want to say this, Scott. Yes, you know a lot, I admit it. And then people will ask, how can we know that what he say is correct? So this I can affirm you only by having ex uh, direct experience because for me, whatever he say, you know, I after that I, I have the experience of what he said. So that can prove that what he said, what he know is so true. And I would say nobody else on earth who I know, who I know that know like you, Scott. You know a lot. It's, it's not popular because people don't really want to know the truth. They claim they do, but they're more attached to their little petty making money and this and that agendas than they are of really knowing who they are or what responsibility that is to the source behind all life, because there is one. There is a responsibility and there's an equal amount of freedom that goes with that. But <clears throat> I would suppose if I started charging a thousand dollars a session to each person about this stuff, I'd have been a billionaire by now. I can't do that. I work with beings who don't even use money in other worlds and other systems that have outlawed it. I'm not saying money's bad. Money's just energy that's being abused and misused all the time by people who abuse and misuse themselves and others. Earth is not a normal place. Not yet, but it can be, which is what I'm, the purpose I'm on this earth is to help bring about a change, not only that is unexpected, but will change the direction of this planet permanently. You wanna play among the stars in the physical universe? You gotta know who you are that isn't one of these. And you gotta know how to work with the energy that supports all those galaxies that float in it. Those galaxies are tiny compared to the energy they float in out there. And it gets bigger as it goes up through the dimensions. It's just amazing when you begin to see it and then to comprehend it because the truth is a being, what people call soul on earth is spherical, like a planet or a sun, it's round. It's not like this. This is not made in the image of the source or the prime creator. 
like people are taught on earth. No, this is one of many types of human and humanoid and other types of forms that were developed. So spherical beings could run them and learn how to become a co-creator with the source. And that's true all over creation in the multidimensional universe. Anywhere you go, it's the same. It's universal. If we want to know how to play among the stars and get across vast distances, we have to understand the nature of the multidimensional layers of the universe. And we have to know how this one energy that is not nuclear atomic works to support all that. Because when we start working with zero point or toroidal energy, all the mysteries of creation begin to unfold. We're capable of comprehending them. Not as a brain and body in one lifetime, but as the spherical being running that brain and body. People need to wake up to who and what they are that they've been made to forget a long time ago. This enlightenment is more about them recovering what has been suppressed in them then learning something new, that comes along with it. A new wisdom comes with it. When we work with the hue, the first sound, the first vibration behind all creation that originated in the source far above the void known to certain esoteric groups on this planet. Then we begin to recall that we originated from that source and part of us still lives there. We are multidimensional capable beings as spherical beings, not as bodies and brains. That is what needs to wake up in people on this planet. I don't care what religion they're in or what they believe. It's all only beneficial to them to awaken this, no matter what they believe. Because people on earth don't even know what soul is. They blab about it and talk about it, haven't got an idea what it's shaped like or what its capabilities are. They don't know who they are. They've long forgotten that. Doesn't mean anything other than they can recall it. It's recoverable, it's reversible. So that's what this work is about. And since I don't charge funds or money to do this, I mean, I've been paid something to go to a conference overseas a couple of times, minimal amount. You know, you fly overseas, you spend a week of your life grounding a new energy into this planet. It's not about the fame or fortune of the people you collaborate with at these conferences, because most of them aren't aware of what's taking place at that conference. And it has to do with beings from other worlds moving energy through that focus, that nexus. This happened in Norway, this happened in Finland. The people who sponsored it weren't aware of it. I couldn't shout about it or tell people. Just generally, I would deliver del deliberately hidden truth in a way that points the way for people to walk through that door if they have the courage to do it. That's all. And I find that even after you do these conferences, the, the amount of people it reaches, although significant, is so minuscule, so tiny, it doesn't really begin to change the consciousness of the planet. It does seed some things here. It does begin a process that, in my experience, is not reversible, fortunately for us. Or we'd already be dead from nuclear war here. Because what people still don't know is that these guys on Earth pushed the button many times to blow us all up. And the launch computers were shut down from space each time. Or we'd all be gone. So that means that people on Earth were never responsible enough all along to not push that button. They still aren't. That's a problem because it creates a problem for life in other dimensions. And we don't have the right as a group of people on this planet to harm ourselves and harm life there. We just don't have that right. We never will have that right. We don't deserve to have that right. And beings from elsewhere see to it that we are not given that right because it's an abuse of free will on others. Simple. If we wanna play in space, we gotta play nice. If we wanna be invited to share in the technology they have, we gotta be able to show them we'll use it correctly or we'll be denied it one way or another. There's a role, there's a pattern to how beings evolve on many world systems and many dimensional levels. And it's all for one single focus. To become a trustworthy co-creator with the source behind all life is our destiny. It's not a tyrant. It isn't in the lower dimensions of time and space. 
He had never demanded that we worship it or suggested it. That was all created by lesser beings. The source itself only requires that we respect it and each other. That means all life in the grand multidimensional creation everywhere, no exceptions. There isn't gray area at all. So this is the groundwork I wanna lay out because at some point, energy that's being uh, squandered right now on earth will be used properly. This work will be supported or backed in a way that it should. I'm not gonna charge money. I sell books because if I didn't, print on the demand facilities around the world like Amazon or uh, Ingram Spark or these other companies that are known cannot print them on demand when they're ordered. You can't ship them. Too expensive shipping costs postally around the world, far too expensive. So I have to do that to get these books in people's hands. As far as I know, the Sayre's Agenda book has that people would call science fiction adventure story maybe. It's published in two categories, nonfiction, mind, body, spirit, UFOs, extraterrestrials, and fiction, action, adventure. These are the only choices you have and you can do too. So they're published in both categories because it'll reach the most people. Yet most people will think of it as just another nice story. There's a special technique section at the back of the Sayre's Agenda that doesn't exist in other books on Earth. And it's a technique involving the first sound behind creation, the primordial zero point toroidal energy out there that's a living force that we're all comprised of as atmos, as souls. And it's designed for the prologue in all 29 chapters so that the hidden truth that's revealed in those chapters, people can have direct experience over time as they lose their fear and addiction to it and wake up knowledge that they've had suppressed in them, bring it to the surface. That's why it was written. And I had help from out of town, meaning friends from off world. Ambassador Trellium is one of them. He's an ambassador from the Sayres, S-E-R-A-S, pronounced as if it was spelled S-A-Y hyphen R-A-Y-S. Sayres. Because they were responsible for developing this type of body and many more advanced bodies throughout the Milky Way and Drama and many other galaxies over a billion years ago. They're human. Tall, 18 to 25 feet. Multi-stranded DNA, much more than R2. And we were developed these body forms by them long ago. And they see that life like this in the astral next dimension up and in the physical universe is a long time ago and then departed to see what we do with it. Consider them representatives, co-creators with the source behind all life. People on earth don't know about them. The UFO and disclosure communities do not know about them. They aren't gonna come walking on this earth. They're far too advanced to do that at this time. You better to hope for having Galactic Alliance representatives come here and walk on this earth openly amongst the public because that's coming, whether we like it or not. People on earth have abused what they call free will so much, so regularly for so often. The only reason they're not dead is because beings from outside here have prevented it without running our governments, without trying to run things, because they don't want that responsibility. They want us to do it properly. That's enough said, that's groundwork. It seems like the people I work with wanted this to be not heavy, but lay this out and then we can have fun beyond earth. That makes sense? Yes. And people always, I mean, I, I meet with a lot of Thai people too, and then they always asking the question, how can we drop fears? How can we have less fears? You know, first open your mind, go on the journey with Scott's book, you know, work on that. And then your fears will drop off little by little, and then you will be much happier in your life. Okay, I want to correct one thing, but we don't open our mind because people don't even know what their mind is. They think it's in their brain. It's not. What did he just say? This crazy person, the mind you think with is not in your brain because you're not a brain in a body of one lifetime born from parents and grows, and grows old and dies in a few short trips around the sun on a planet. No, the mind is a 
comes from a body you're running four dimensions up from here. We call it the mental plane, higher heavens, so to speak, not the highest reality by any means. So the mind, a single being like you or I, is running a body like this on different molecular time rates simultaneously to learn how to be this co-creator. An example, the next major division up is astral. That's where all emotion comes from. Not from this body you grew up to this life. It channels through it. And lives much longer than this life. It's made of a higher molecular time rate of matter. The bodies are nuclear in that regard. The beings running them are not. What did he say? The beings, you, running the body is not nuclear. <laughs> It's like toroidal or zero point energy in the form of an individualized being that's part of a source energy they came from before the lower worlds of time and space were even created. Wow. If that's true, what I just said, that would be a revelation of all time and space for people on this planet. And I don't own it. I don't possess it. I don't suppress it. I respect it. I share it openly because as that channel of energy comes through me to this world and others who I work with, it does have a positive or constructive effect on things. You got to remember too, though, that the people that are in the running things on earth right now are in such a negative momentum. They don't even know how to stop themselves. That's obvious to anyone who lives outside this world when they look at it. And believe me, they look at it all the time. Think of it this way. If none of the races that are on earth today evolved here and they didn't, that means their differences evolved somewhere out in other star systems, on other worlds. And they were brought here, often as slaves, in histories that you don't even remember, and left here to procreate when the world was generally destroyed in a polar flip. There are classified people on this earth that know for a fact this pole flips its planet. It would flip its poles, physical poles. They classified it right away. Russia did, the United States did under Gorbachev. They know it. Too afraid to tell people that because they can't control it at all. If it happens again, we're all done. So they classified it because when they investigated it further, they found out it was cyclic. This all has to do with extraterrestrial stuff, which is the most highly classified thing, far beyond the hydrogen bomb because it means massive change for people on this world. They either get with the program or they lose their bodies on this earth again. It's that simple. So we wanna have fun beyond the stars. We gotta start having respect for other beings in other worlds, don't we? We have to be able to play with them nicely because they aren't attacking us. Hasn't anybody ever noticed that when they've been shot at and somebody's trying to crash one and bring it down so we can reverse engineer it, that they've never retaliated? How common sense is that understanding? They've never come down here, big cockroaches in ships and blown everybody up for shooting at them. They've never done that. Why have they not done that? Duh. Maybe they're far more evolved than we are and we could learn from them. They're willing to, I don't want to say teach us, but they're certainly willing to provide us with the tools and the understanding to play among the stars if we can be trusted with it. Simple. Very simple. Okay. So let's play beyond Earth. Yes. Scott, we have done so many videos together and you were mentioning like we have four bodies in, in other planes, all we call higher self. Yeah. People can always, you know, look back, search for Awakened Hidden Truth and then you can find many, many interesting videos from Scott or can even go to Scott's website, you know? Yeah, it's at paralleltime.com. Just like two words, parallel and time together. There are four websites, but the main one is Parallel Time. And the, the videos that I did presentations at and Finland and Norway, a few other places are there. Radio shows are there. There's no charge to explore them and watch them and go to my YouTube uh, channel and watch 60, watch more videos that I produced 
and have a professional narrator on orchestrated music and minute and 20 second videos about this work. Several of them have had about 250,000 views, but you know what? It doesn't mean anything. 250 million views would matter. And I don't monetize them. That means you don't charge and not charged for it. And I don't make money off them. How can he do that? What, what we, everyone else does this. I don't. And that's because of the nature of my work. For me, it's a requirement. So funding for my work comes from books, but it comes from people. Because there's people on earth that are terribly trapped by the wealth and power they have. And some of them are waking up and they want to get out of it. And they're being prepared for their benefit. That's all I have to say on this issue. And Scott, for those who want to support your work can contact you directly, right? Well, they can write to me through the contact page at paralleltime.com, sure. It's not hidden. Let me show you something. I want to show this. To, I'm going to share this screen just for a moment before we go on a journey. Um, I want to make it, I've done this before, but people's memories are very short on this planet. And they don't remember oftentimes when something like this is done. <clears throat> so here's the main website at paralleltime.com. As you can see, there's a young, beautiful woman looking at a very advanced culture on another planet. This is an artist named um, Arthur Blue. And by permission, he's given me permission to use this wonderful art because the guy has great insight into life on other worlds. And out of respect, I asked if I could use them. And he gave me permission to do it. This is great art, in my view. So anyway, I don't make money off his work. I don't monetize anything. This is his proprietary work. I have permission to use it, simple as that. There is a contact link right here. Contact this, it goes to this. Your name, email, subject, and no emails are ever given to anybody else or sold, period. Up here is a language selector. Let's say I wanna see this website in Arabic. Oh, gee whiz, there it is. Let's say I wanna see it in Thai where Perry is. You know how many times I've brought this up to people and they don't take wow, it. Beautiful. So let's say I want to do it in Russian. What the heck? Why not? They're people, right? Yeah. Whoa. All right. So this contact page, let's get this back in English for now. Okay. Uh, let's see. There we go. Let me go back to the home page here. You scroll down. This is a first big video that plays. I don't know if you can hear that, Perry. No, I don't hear it. Okay, we'll stop. Uh, We're going to stop. But let's scroll down and you'll see a Finland video. You'll see another video radio show. Another one. You'll see this thing I did on, uh, oh, what was that called? Uh, Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our shows, please. That's out of a uh, Scandinavian country. This is out of Israel. Uh, it's a couple of the videos I produced. And you can go watch those for free. It's just the main page. There's the books. There are going to be two more in the next month and a half. This is the Emerald Doorway, which is published worldwide. The Guardians of the Ancient One and Journey to the Center of the Universe, and it's not the physical universe, will be out soon. So this whole trilogy will be out. This is out the Sayre's Agenda. There it is. Hardback, paperback, and ebook. These two books will be out shortly. Four books, screenplays written for them. They're developed for feature film. They've been preparing for decades. So it's not new to me in any way, shape, or form. There's an album I have of my music called Stranger on a Lost Island. The Lost Island is planet Earth right here. This master teacher is bringing this woman with blue skin out into the galaxy from this location to visit Earth. You come down here, you read a lot of stuff. If you go up to the top, back up to the top, if you go to About Scott Hugh, 
There are two recordings of my voice sending out the hue in three-part harmony. One of them runs about 24 minutes and people can work with this at no charge to connect into this out here. All that energy between the stars and the galaxies is the zero point. It's a telepathic medium, not psychic, telepathic. This is how we begin to awaken on this planet because this is known out there consciously. It's not known on earth yet. If you come back to this and you go to the books, you go to a book page, you can look at this thing and see the chapters. You can blow it up and take a look and read those chapters. See the back cover. Oh, let's see. How do we get out? I don't know. That's the front cover. Here's the links to Barnes and Noble or Amazon or iBooks to get these books. There's nothing sold at the website, no shopping cart. There's the Emerald Doorway, the same thing. So all that's provided for people. Film projects are mentioned. Music, including half the tracks you can listen to. Conference videos I've attended and done special presentations at are here. Coast to coast. Art Bell before he quit, before he passed away. Jar articles on science, quantum physics, and things like that. News, same thing. Media requests, if someone wants me on a radio show, they just go here, put in their information and contact me. You know, very few people do because they're just not awake enough to understand what's sitting there on this earth. So the main thing is, is when you go to the homepage, look up here and see this translation button. Because every language on earth, I can put this in Zulu. Vietnamese, Turkish. Mongolian, Korean. I can put this in Dutch. I can put this in Oh, any language you can think of, Chinese, traditional. So if somebody wants to look at this in Thai, the videos will always be in English. They just can't produce, not with what I have, all of these videos in some foreign language. But, and so the titles will always be in English, but if someone watches one of these videos in English and they speak another language and they just listen, they're going to find that they're beginning to understand. It's like putting one of my books under their pillow at night. They don't read English. But when you're out of your body at night, which people go out of their body every single night without being aware of it, generally, they can speak or understand languages from all of the universe and every language on earth. And they will be met by master teachers or guides from the Galactic Alliance and other orders that can help can talk to them in Thai or Mexican or Russian. It's no big deal for them, you see. So let's get this back to English for now. From if my you, experience, if they, go, those, if they yes. go here to contact, they can write to me. And I will write back to them if they're honest, if they're genuine, and they really want to contact me, I will write back to them. I actually take the time to do that. Can you imagine how impossible this would be when 10 million people want to contact me? It won't be possible anymore this way. So we're going to have to create something different, aren't we? I'm going to stop the sharing now. And for those who don't know where to start, from my experience, I start from reading your books and go to watch Scott's video from Finland. You know, very, very, very interesting. I just can't stop listening, watching it. Do you see what that is on the front cover of the Say Ray's Agenda book? Mm -hmm. What does this mean, the Say Ray's Agenda? It's not an Earth term. And it's not about humans on Earth, but it is about humans. This is a mile-long Galactic Alliance Emerald Star Cruiser. 
has a bridge here and a bridge at the other end. It's cylindrical with a flattened top and little observation windows all around the center of the hall. These are scout craft. This is stationed in the ice rings, in the ice rings that surround the planet Saturn in our solar system. This is a smaller vessel, it's a mile long. And it's there permanently for now to keep us from destroying ourselves or we would be gone already. Understand this. There are bases on Earth from other worlds that are allowed by Galactic Alliance uh, regulations, I suppose you could call it, to monitor life here without interfering. And they cannot be accessed by our military. They cannot be intruded in. They can't be attacked. They're in a higher frequency on Earth in a higher parallel dimension. So you've got to know that technology. There's a guy on the back here. Mark Sanfield, he's in a, an a tent, single solo camping trip in the High Sierra Mountains in California. And these guys from another planet are trying to kill him and he's beamed up to this ship safely. And his life changes after that forever because he's picked up by a human from another world. Okay, this is the Emerald Doorway. If you look at the cover, you're gonna see three humans a master teacher holding a crystal cord staff, a device, a woman with blue skin from another world, human, a Caucasian male, and a little creature called a dren. And that creature developed as a silica-based creature on another world where she comes from, underwater in huge extinct volcanic caverns, natural ecosystems, and they evolved the ability to levitate and fly through the air to defy gravity as an organic creature. So there are over 30 illustrations of key scenes and characters in this book. That's Eva, cute, adorable, feisty, courageous to a fault. This guy, if you befriended him, would die for you to protect you if he could has all the qualities of advanced humans that humans don't even know how to demonstrate here. This is an Asian looking guy named Nim. Nim has blue eyes. He looks Asian, but he's not from Earth. So when you look at some of these things, you can actually see the control panel inside a 30 foot galactic scout. This is not the kind that you would call uh, things they've seen on Earth. So if you want to play and you go through this, it's going to help you remember a great deal you were made to forget. That's why it's on this Earth. They all, they all have glossaries of characters and terms, extraterrestrial technology and names and uh, phonetic pronunciations so you can sound out how they are said properly. It's not normal for a science fiction book, you know what I mean? And the Sarah's agenda. Yes, I it's, totally agree with that. When you look at the back of this book, when you're done going through the story, then begins this, and it's quite lengthy. It's, um, well, let's see, it goes from 291 to 335. And that's just this section which is preliminary technique section in this book. I have a few stories to share with you and you guys. Your books are energy books or live books, you know. Many Thai people, they don't read English, but they get your books, you know, they put under the pillows. Sometimes when they just receive your books because just order and then they open it, they could feel the energy from the book, you know. And when they went to the bookstore here in Thailand, they feel like the book is calling them, you know, so they had to turn to see what is that book. So they found your book, the series agenda on the, on the Emerald Doorway. It's true, it's happening here in Thailand. It's actually a big bookstore and it's got its own table with my books on it, which is not even in the United States or anywhere else on earth. So it's a good beginning because certain about Thai people that is down deep, very genuine, something about their need to know. And even though they have trouble getting it at first, they're having experiences like Perry's saying, 
even though they can't read English. Because it isn't limited to the limitations people place on themselves on this planet. I had help from friends from out of town. When I had my first experience of beings from other worlds, I was this body was three years old. And I was out of it as a mature male from another world waking up. And that closed down, but I had to work all of my life to recover what I was made to forget without my permission by tyrants who intercepted a mission I came to this world to accomplish a very long time ago. So you could say that it's being accomplished now, better late than never. But the conditions had to be different than they were when I came here. And others have come here from other worlds to try to get people, governments to cooperate, to lay down their nuclear nonsense because there's no constructive use for it at all, ever, none. Which also means that beings from other worlds do not use nuclear power to get around the universe. So what do they use? Hmm, they don't use nuclear power. Then what do they use, you suppose? Hmm. Maybe the toroidal zero point energy of the entire universe to get around. Oh, you mean you can run that through your ship's design and it won't pollute or burn fuel or radiate anyone? Hmm, yes. Okay, so that being said, we'll go on a journey. What I do on these journeys is simple, and I'm not the only one doing it. There are friends from out of town, meaning off world, human and other, that work with me in a timing. So they're present even now to begin to send out the first half of the word human, hue the first primordial sound that existed before the lower worlds of time and space were constructed. And I'll send this out on different tone levels, a bit higher, in order to connect with different realities that you're all living in right now, running a body you don't even remember. And then at that point, we will go on a journey outside the negative atmosphere of planet Earth saturated with fears and negativity. Negative images, negative deeds done by people to people and animals to animals all over the history of this world, going back to after the dinosaurs were made extinct. It's all still recorded bouncing off the ionosphere like a radio wave. It does not go outside the atmosphere, out into the zero point energy. It can't be recorded in that. This, folks, is higher science, much higher science. To understand this and know it and work with it is a different matter than just believing in something. My work is about direct experience or providing the means for others to have direct experience about recovering their own suppressed awareness of hidden truth. So this little radio show we do is called Awaken Hidden Truth, but we're going to change it to having fun beyond earth or something like that. We could say having fun beyond earth, awaken hidden truth or having fun beyond earth while awakening hidden truth or whatever, anyway. If any of you really want to experience recovering the ability to leave your body, which you do every night, but generally aren't aware of it when you wake up that body in the morning, then to do that, which is normal for many races on many hundreds of millions of worlds in our own galaxy, you might as well become aware of it. Because if you're not, you're not living a normal life. I ask you to visualize, this is just using daydreaming. All of you know how to daydream. It's just when you're sitting around, you're bored and you just look out a window and you just imagine being someone else. No effort involved at all. You see it. You clearly see it. You imagine it. This is a use of a capability the Atma has, the spherical being running a body, to look into the multiverse through the zero point energy and know things directly, plug into it. The hue opens a door in the pineal gland, the center of the brain, and begins a process that once started is not reversible because it begins to recover and awaken who you are. 
It was set up this way. Imagine someone you love and respect, you're grateful they are in your life, a person, place, or thing, but make sure it's genuine, meaning that it makes you smile inside. It could be a child's smile. It could be a, a hummingbird hovering in front of your face, your cat, your dog, your children, um, religious master, spiritual teacher of some kind that, that warms your heart, whatever it might be. The key is to have respect and love for whatever that is because it connects to something which is far beyond, far beyond any religion that ever got brought to this planet or that is existing on this planet. It's far beyond the limitations of what's contained in the atmosphere and history of this world. It is out in the greater God. It's out in the, what we call source, prime creator, the vast nature of the multidimensional universe itself. because far more of what people on earth call the supreme being lives there than on this planet. Common sense. Imagine this, if you could imagine being on a golden sandy beach in a tropical paradise. You could imagine being standing on a cliff near a roaring waterfall cascading 10,000 feet from an open cavern atop of a single snow covered mountain disappearing behind a blue-green forest surrounding a huge clear dome covering a city. You could do any of this. I recommend for people who really want to know that before they go to bed at night, they take the time and a little bit of effort to go into the hue. Round hole sound vibrates the head upward only, basically the pineal gland in the center of the brain. Therefore, you can do this and have your own experience to verify this for yourself. This becomes a telepathic connection between the source behind all life and you directly. It becomes aware of you running a body unconscious on earth and begins a process of not only training, but a safe way of, of waking you up. Hmm. Again, this needs to be your own experience, not my words. I will begin those tones now. You... What is taking place there, if you have your eyes closed, I would recommend it. 
If you do not, lay down or sit in a chair, take several deep breaths, and send out your own hue just for a couple of minutes by yourself. And I'll be right back. And I am back with you. All of you know how to use daydreaming, probably unconsciously, or maybe some of you quite consciously. I can't determine that, but from what I see of the condition of the world, most people will use it unconsciously. And they idly imagine something they desire, something they want in their life or another place, maybe a vacation, maybe in the mountains, maybe on the ocean, maybe on another planet, maybe in another dimension, another galaxy. Beings that run bodies on earth are capable of doing this, not the brain and the body, but the being running it. Daydreaming is just seeing into the zero point or toroidal or energy of the universe, what some people call divine spirit behind and supporting everything and communicating with it. It is far better to imagine being in other realities and experiencing things than to just believe something because it was taught to you from outside yourself. Direct experience liberates beings. Faith alone does not do that. If it's good faith, it should lead to direct experience and then knowing certainty and the confidence of becoming a co-creator with the source behind all life. Your body will naturally go into a sleep state just like you put it in every single night. When you put that body to sleep, no one is home. The heart works, the lungs work, you breathe, but you're, it's on automatic and you're gone. Now, wouldn't it be great and wonderful and miraculous and something filled with childlike wonder to be able to consciously leave your body, explore the universe with friends from out of town, beyond earth, master teachers, kind, more advanced beings. And come back to earth with this awareness in the morning. This is what this work is about. If you want a spaceship ride, you can have it, but not to mindlessly entertain you. There are enough spaceships in the universe to come and pick up 7 billion people individually on earth and give them a ride and bring them back. And that wouldn't change them. It wouldn't do much good. Not unless they were prepared to be confidently standing in the center of their own gravity, the center of their own being amongst such evolved beings so that you can learn and contribute in a childlike wondrous way, a mature way. For anybody to pick up anybody on earth to give them such an experience, there must be a purpose for that individual to have that happen to them. It isn't random at all.
Imagine being up near the ceiling. This is just daydream, remember? Looking down on your body, what is it like for you to look at your body sitting there with eyes closed or laying down? In the trance state on earth, we call sleep. That's right. It's an automated state that runs the body while you're gone, which means the brain and body gets its energy to function from you. And you are connected to the source behind all life or that body would not do anything. It would perish, cease to exist. The contact that a being makes with a physical body to run it is done through the pineal gland in the center of the human brain. That's the link. The energy that links to it is not nuclear, atomic, physical matter, and it cannot be broken by any weapon or technology on earth or in any of the world system. This type of communication with bodies and with each other existed before the lower worlds of time and space were even first built. And if you, the spherical being, comes from a place far above what people call the void and comes from pure positive energy or the upper realities where no negative nature exists at all, then how old are you? Hmm? How old are you? If you come from the source and it existed before time and space was created, how old are you? It's the first thing any atma running a body needs to awaken to make any progress worth anything at all. You... When this is being done, I'm hearing it, this omnipresent first sound out in space, outside of Earth's atmosphere. There are beings gathered there who create a focus for our attention so that we can get something productive and benevolent and uplifting and enlightening out of this journey. It is you operating beyond the body that imagines and goes on this journey with me and others. And when we're through with it, you will be bringing that back to all the forms you're running on different planes that you're probably not even aware of. And you'll be bringing back that awareness of this journey back to your personality and brain and body you grew up with here on earth. And it will change that permanently for the better. More brain cells begin to turn on than six to 10% that people on earth say we use out of 100% developed brain. How absurd is that? Hmm. You know why no more of it's used than that? Because people are afraid to turn on higher faculties to utilize 100% of their brain because of experiences they've long forgotten that weren't so nice out in the universe and some that were. Simple as that. Imagine what it would be like to be up in the upper atmosphere looking down on your city where you live. Whether it's day or not won't make any difference because as an atma, you light up everything around you. Like the sun, you are spherical in shape. You have a white core and layers of a certain thickness of teardrop-shaped lights build in layers of the spectrum of light from a white core through yellow, through orange, through red, through green, through blue, through violet, through lavender. There's a golden energy field around that because it covers the spectrum of light. It's spherical. Do you want to play out in the universe? Go as the atma, the true hue. Go in and connect to the primordial hue sound behind all creation and explore to your heart's content. You can if you wish to. Subconscious fear, which is an artificially created emotion, not on earth, and implanted in your toroidal field that surrounds you as a spherical being and your physical body, people call the aura, is where negative implant programs have been placed. 
It is from there that they are neutralized or removed. We're going to go outside the atmosphere of this planet and meet with beings from the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, located on a planet called Zetronami 1, near the galactic core of the Milky Way galaxy. It is a planet four times larger than Earth, has no polar ice caps, and three moons the size of Earth with no polar ice caps, all populated, and they circle a trinary sun system. Three suns. Blue-white giant, yellow sun like Earth's, sun Sol, perhaps a red giant out further or a red dwarf. Scientists on Earth, especially classified ones, know that there are binary and trinary sun systems in profuse numbers in our galaxy and in others. Beings that are human and otherwise that evolve out there have much greater advantage to have a greater or higher form of DNA and run bodies of a higher nature than people on Earth do yet. Out in space above the world, what people call sub-zero temperatures or absolute zero or any of that other stuff has nothing to do with you. Is your body peaceful, running on automatic, is back on Earth. You are in a circle of beings around a being. I'm introduced to you if you haven't met him before. His name is Ambassador Torellian. He is the ambassador of the Say Rays human race. And he has an 18 foot tall body, looks like a Greek god, standing in space in his bare feet, kind of a full length gown kind of thing on. Slightly wavy long blonde hair to his shoulders, big crystal blue eyes and slightly pointed ears like an elf. And he's holding his two thumbs up with a golden sphere of light around each, which he's brought here from a much higher reality to create a field of energy out in space around us as a kind of a protection to go on this journey. I'm a co-creator, a co-worker with this being and many others. So I'm standing beside him off to the right and I have a little short human type body that looks flawless, perfect, trim, strong, about 36, but so do each one of you on this journey, you will see that you can perceive you're a spherical being looking at this form that looks like you, but it's perfectly healthy, flawless in every way, about 36, handsome, beautiful, whatever you want to describe it as. This is how we show ourselves to each other, off world, beyond Earth's atmosphere. That body is made of energy. It's a projection from the white core of your being, which is spherical, hovering above it. If you look above Torellian, you see an even brighter sphere hovering above him. There are a man and a woman. They are not from Earth. They are human or humanoid, very similar to human, dressed elegantly but simply. About 36, flawlessly healthy. And you'll find that they are standing nearby to you at your left and right side. And all they're doing is looking at the spherical being you are hovering above it. And you can see the spherical being they are hovering above their male and female bodies. And they're looking at this toroidal field. You get online, look up what a toroidal field looks like. It's like an electromagnetic field that circles around you comes up through your bottom pole, goes through the top. Same as around Earth, same as around the galaxy, same as around your physical body. That toroidal field has a structure and intelligence connected to the multiverse through the first sound, through the omnipresent zero-point toroidal energy of the universe, divine spirit, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't care. It is one power and it is a co-creator with what we imagine, good or bad or both. It's important to understand this, good or bad or both. The first thing anybody that wants to make advances in awakening on earth needs to do is understand the need for them to stop focusing on negative things, period. It's a challenge, isn't it, in a world like earth? 
But out here in space, you're not fettered with or bothered by all the negative stuff that's programmed inside the atmosphere that surrounds the planet. That too one day will be neutralized, completely cleansed. And it'll be done by you and all the beings living on Earth at the time with the help from many advanced races out among the stars. And the master teachers that teach them. In space, you do not feel cold or heat or radiation from the sun. You are pure energy. The energy of you as a sphere and the body you're showing to us around Torelli is not nuclear or atomic in nature whatsoever. No molecules, no atoms, no DNA. It is the energy behind and supporting all of that that floats in it. Earlier, I showed you an image of a, of a being named Etta, who is a dren, three foot long from the tip of his nose to his tail, dexterous hands and feet like a human, but he looks not really like a salamander. He's much bigger, of course, but he's got big bulbous blue eyes, and a long snout, looks like he's amused about something when his mouth is closed. He's telepathic, has a photographic memory and vocal cords. He is not carbon-based, he is silica-based, and he has developed his race, the ability to levitate and fly through the air. He's not from Earth, and he is a master teacher, not human. He's courageous and kind almost to a fault. He exemplifies the best qualities of human beings, and he isn't even human. And him and his wife, Din, are hovering there behind Torellian, one on each of his shoulders. He's a big dude, you know. He's showing you a body form right now out in space that the Seyres had over a billion years ago before they immortalized it. They didn't immortalize it by making the body live forever as a molecular structure, DNA, no. They took the 12-stranded DNA they had and dissolved it or absorbed it into a teardrop in one of the layers of the spherical being they are and immortalized it. In other words, when they want to show it or use it or even walk on a planet, they'll draw energy from the zero point energy, fill that DNA and the bodies instantly appear. Always for a purpose, never just to indulge in it for the hell of it. Never. So they have a type of immortalized form in this way. He's simply showing you what it used to look like over a billion years ago. Right out in space, outside Earth's atmosphere, right now. There is a white golden light everywhere you look out here. As an atma, you see it. Your physical eyes on Earth cannot. They can't see into a high enough frequency. Okay. When you look out in space and you look at Hubble telescope images of galaxies and planets on Earth and the moon and the stars and the sun and they appear like they're floating in a black void, right? But that's because human eyes can only interpret it as black or without light because the light that is there is brilliant. It's quite golden and it fills space everywhere. It is not nuclear in nature at all. It is the energy of life itself, an omnipresent living power that suspends and supports all the things that create little magnetic worlds within it. They float in it. The stars in space, several billion in this galaxy are beautiful. Blue, yellow and red, orange. And you can see them clearly, even though the white golden light of the primordial force or, that supports it is there. You can see them between the earth and the moon and the sun and the stars. You can see Andromeda, the next galaxy over, because you're up outside of Earth's atmosphere. You can simply focus on it as an app and see it like you have a telephoto lens. It's a little bigger than Earth, than uh, the Milky Way, but a spiral galaxy, nearest neighbor. They have a Galactic Alliance Council on that world as well. The one near Zetern on Zetronomy, near the galactic core, not in the core, near it, 
has 5,000 members that represent over 450 million spacefaring races that meet in a huge opaque white dome on that planet's surface. They do not have money. It is outlawed. They do not trade like somebody has 50 sheep, so they'll give you two if you give them metal you need. This is not how they function. People on those massive numbers of worlds grow up the passionate, uninhibited desire to create that which will be of uplifting benefit to all their fellows on all those worlds. A 10-year-old on one of those planets like Norexalum, way beyond the Pleiades area in our galaxy, have an equivalent of 10 PhDs by the time they are 10. Why? Because they have photographic memories and they use 100% of 100% of the brain they have and they're running DNA bodies with four strands that live a thousand or longer years by choice without aging. Or not like they do on Earth, certainly nowhere like on Earth. These are fellow beings. People on Earth once had more strands of DNA and something happened that put them on Earth with no memory. This is a hard thing for people on Earth to confront what happened way back then. But it must be done so that that terror, that subconscious manipulative force which misdirects your thinking on Earth can be put away as simply a memory. Its effect on your conscious decision-making then ends. We are hovering in space around a central figure, which is Torellian, to keep us focused on getting something constructive out of this journey, because the worlds in the physical universe are vast. They become even larger and more vast in the astral, causal, mental, and etheric planes, even before you get to what certain esoteric groups on Earth call the void. And the void is not empty of energy. It just doesn't have any apparent physical form in it. But there are beings that reside there. I have met them. The energy above that is what's called pure positive. And it has always existed there as this void is a barrier between the two, the upper realities and the lower worlds of time and space. And things are changing up there now that will result in a transformation for planet Earth. Otherwise, the people on Earth today will annihilate all life on this planet again. Be aware that the only way Earth will survive what it's going through right now is by the assist, kind assistance of friends from out of town, from beyond this planet. The only way. It will not do it on its own. So it's very important that all of you become aware of beings out in the universe so you can respect them, not lay down as a rug for them to walk on. You know, mutual respect, kindness. They would bring their technology to earth had the government leaders allowed it long ago and wouldn't even have charged us any money or anything for it. One of the primary requirements is that we give up all nuclear weapons, all radioactive materials that are only harmful. They're not a threat to people from outside of Earth. They can neutralize those silly bomb casings in an instant. They've done it before. They're not tyrants. They don't want to dominate and run our governments. They want us to grow up. You want to play and have fun beyond Earth, you have to respect and know the life that's out there. Or it cannot be done. There is no future in space travel out among the stars for people on Earth the way people are on Earth right now. Because space is, as a fact, already occupied by generally far more advanced races, many of them human. And we're going to have to learn how to get along with them or they're not going to lift the quarantine that surrounds our entire solar system right now. The most highly classified people on earth understand this and they have been told they need to disclose this to the public. They've also been given some guidance to do it at the right time in the right way 
So it creates the least amount of any kind of destruction. Consider that there are worlds in space, time out in the universe that cross this dangerous path that Earth people are on now. And at the last minute, somebody showed up to provide the energy and awareness for people to choose to go a different way than to annihilate themselves. Out in space, outside the atmosphere of Earth, these hidden truths, when you come across the path with them, cannot be denied. And they cannot be buried again. You cannot suppress them again. Once they're awake, that's it. It's a one-way ticket. There are two places we can go on a journey that might be relevant and of value to people on this, what we call having fun beyond earth, awaken hidden truth, the radio show recorded journey. There are master teachers out beside Torellian in a circle, inner circle between us that surround him, all of you on this journey, and all of you that will go on it when you play this recording back once it's on you, Perry's YouTube channel because this is recorded now. And there are many beings on this trip and it's not even on the internet yet. Because other beings that have joined us are out of their body around the world right now. Out here in space, truth cannot be denied you. There's a place called Ogham Des. It's the name of a spiritual type of city, if you want to call it that. It is on Earth, hidden in the Himalaya mountains, in the third higher parallel dimension of the physical universe. What do I mean by that? It means there are 144 parallel dimensions of different rates of time molecules, different molecular time rates, just in the physical universe alone before you approach the border of the next major division, which is we call on Earth the astral plane. It is a plane where all emotion moves matter instead of pushing effort around to move matter like we do on Earth. Ogham Des is generally overseen by a group of monks. They are not Buddhist. They are beyond that. And they are generally from other worlds. There is a city there of sorts. And it's a spaceport for craft to land on this planet safely for its occupants from worlds that aren't polluted like Earth to be put through a kind of conditioning to be able to tolerate walking amongst the people on Earth unseen and undetected, unless they want you to see them and detect them. This is just a much higher technology, but it's also the nature of the awakened higher faculties, the beings that can do this that prevent their detection. They aren't here to take over countries. They're here to keep us from destroying ourselves, period. Agam dress is like a Shambhala, but it's not Shambhala. It's a, a warm nexus in the middle of snow. And it is maintained this way by very advanced beings. One of a number of such locations that keep Earth from being destroyed by fearful, subconsciously misdirected people. Fear is the only thing anybody has to give up in this lifetime completely. Nothing else has to be given up except that. Because it blocks conscious awareness of almost everything. You... There is a mile long ship. It's on the front cover of the Emerald Doorway. No. It's a raise agenda. Not the Emerald Doorway. 
have to ground myself back on earth for a moment in order to differentiate the two. And it is blue-gray metal that's cylindrical, has curved bridge control windows on the upper half of the hall on one end, the same identical bridge control on the other end because it's designed to travel through interdimensional doorways and cover vast areas of galactic travel in short periods of time. There are no launch bays in this ship. The disc-shaped craft with the three semispheric or hemispheric pods in the bottom actually change their molecular time rate through the electromagnetic force around their craft so that they can raise it up, move through the molecules of the parent ship near the center and land in a landing bay when they lower the molecular time rate of their craft back down. So they get in and out of that ship without any open launch bays. It is a sealed ship. It is stationary with a pale blue luminosity of intergravitic light, as they call it, around the hull. And it's kept safe from the surrounding chunks of ice, water, frozen the size of skyscrapers and other small mounts that make up the relatively thin mile and a half thick ice rings that surround the gas giant planet Saturn in our solar system. And you can see that ship from where you are right now. In fact, Torellian and all of us are now hovering in space outside of the planet Saturn, looking at it down near under the surface layer of these big chunks of ice that make up the ice rings of the planet Saturn. And a dozen different scout craft, 30 foot in diameter, kind of a blue gray metal with a glass blue like dome on top, very modern, more advanced ships. And they are simply entering the hall to land from both sides. Near the front, you can see this on the front of the book itself, just up the equator, the midsection of the ship are these six foot long vertical oval windows, observation windows down the entire length on both sides. And about a third of the way up towards the bridge is a 60 foot high by many hundreds of feet long observation lounge. And Torellian and all of us circling them are moving down, moving smaller until we're a very small group of beings around Torellian. Ed and dinner there, several master teachers, Ramu and Opelum. And these men and women who have been with you are going to find themselves passing through one of these oval windows and appearing with their feet, bare feet, wiggling in plush blue carpet in a massive chamber. Torellian is standing 18 feet tall in the background, there's two thumbs up, the golden energy around the sphere of light, smiling. The being he is, the spherical being he really is above that, just like you. And you're all standing around with 300 of the ship's personnel because that is the complement that mans this craft, 300. He's a mile long. They are human, bald, longer earlobes, some slanted eyes, oval eyes, silver hair, green skin, blue skin, snake-like skin, but no scales, human and humanoid. And you're looking at the crew representing many world systems of the 450 million that 5,000 council members oversee on the planet Zetronami near the galactic core of the Milky Way. A man and a woman are getting up from a glass oval, blue glass table. And they're getting up out of egg shaped, blue cushioned white chairs. And they're greeting us with their right hand over their chest. They look to be about 40. Man and a woman, handsome and beautiful, elegant, tall, a little over six feet. And they are the commanders, the co-commanders of this ship. If you want to know their names, 
go into the Sayre's Agenda book. Don't read it, imagine it, explore it, have the direct experience it represents because it's designed to be a channel of the primordial first sound to you the whole time you go on the journey. You will find this out by your own direct experience. Don't take my word for it. You don't need to. And they are greeting you in what's called galactic standard. And you understand it out here, like you're hearing English or Thai or any language you, you're from, whatever country, doesn't matter. These 300 ships crew are gonna come around and begin to meet with you and chat with you while you're standing there, holding your own ground, standing in the center of your own gravity, having your own dignity, because you are like them. Even if you no longer are aware of what they know, you can be again. These beings are not placing themselves above you. They're recognizing you as kindred spirits that long ago lived out in the universe before you found yourself on earth in a body with little or no memory intact. I'm going to send out the hue now because I'm standing in front of this table, in front of this couple. They know who I am. I am not known by the name Scott out there. And when I hue, you're going to see a little sphere of crystal appear in the hand of the man, the commander. And it's a ruby crystal in the center of it. It's going to begin to glow and pulse. And a shaft of white golden light is coming down now through the ceiling of this craft into this ruby crystal center, into this sphere, and radiating out through all of us as a pure field of white golden light. This is the energy of the hue, first half of the word human, primordial first sound, first word behind all creation is not a written word. And it's coming from a reality far above what people, certain esoteric groups on earth know as the void. And it is com communication connecting to the white core of your being through the physical form you're showing each other here. And then it's continuing through Torelli and out through the hull of the ship, out into the solar system and into three pyramids located on earth, two in the earth's deepest bottom oceans, quite massive, bigger than one in Egypt, white alabaster, quartz, white alabaster, gold crowned and quartz capped. One in a hollowed out interior of a mountain in the Himalayas. And you can see all this standing here on this carpet aboard the galactic Emerald Star Cruiser. This is the prim primordial first sound connecting with you while you're here on this ship in a safe environment, nowhere near the atmosphere of Earth. You're going to bring some of this white golden light back with you because it's being stored in the white core of your being. And it's going through this physical form and its pure energy that looks just like you, but flawless, about 36. And it's being transferred back to you and me and Perry, hovering around Torellian out in space, looking down in the polar ice caps of Earth. The barren moon that does not turn on its axis as it circles the planet, very abnormal. No atmosphere, little gravity, crater, meteor craters all over it. That is not normal at all. The gravitational forces of the sun and other planets, it should not be unable. It should not be not turning at all on its axis, and it doesn't. That too will change. And you are looking at this body you have back on Earth. You're standing in a monastery high up in the Himalayas in a sunny area with flowers and plants. And there are monks sitting around chanting some exotic language, not earth. And they're in maroon robes and bald heads and they're from every race you've ever known and some you've never seen. There are several scout craft, 30 disc shaped craft parked on pads outside this monastery in a field lushly planted. 
And there are men and women getting out of those craft that came here from the Emerald Star Cruiser. And they're going up these steps into this monastery and they're sitting down in the circle of these monks. And they're the electromagnetic field that surrounds their physical form and the atma they are, which these monks see, of course, is being altered to be able to withstand the negative impact of walking amongst people, men and women and kids on earth to carry out a certain mission, not to interfere or run governments, but to keep us from annihilating ourselves. That's Agam Das. Now, you can see yourself hovering near the ceiling back on earth, looking at your body with eyes closed. Hopefully you've been paying attention. Now that body and that brain, that personality you grew up with does not have this experience at all. You have just had it. You are spherical. You're gonna send a little white golden beam of light from the core of your being down through the top of your head into the pineal gland, the center of the brain and let it radiate in an expanding circle out through your body out into the earth, back to those pyramids, and then out in space to even larger pyramids, one station between two stable asteroids in the asteroid field between Mars and Jupiter, in an asteroid field that circles in the orbit of a planet that was a planet between Mars and Jupiter. And it goes from there to even larger pyramids now stationed and manifesting between individual stars in our galaxy. And then it goes up through what you would call the pole that runs through the center of the galaxy, what people call a black hole, and it connects upward. And this energy is in constant motion through you for your benefit, but it doesn't stop there. You cannot possess it or hold it in your hand like a thing. It's to be respected because it respects you, at least your potential. Endeavor to remember as much of this experience as you can when you open your eyes back on earth. Do the same if you've kept your eyes open. I have people shut their eyes for one reason, to shut off the brain, the one that allows light to come into you from the physical world around you so that an inner vision, a greater ability of you as the spherical being can see into the multiverse, plug into it and know things and remember things. When you're ready, be kind to yourself. Respect all life, do your best, and then open your eyes. Was well, Perry still there? Or does she go to sleep? Perry. Mm -hmm. Might have taken her out further than she thought. What we'll do then if she's not back is I want to do one thing into wishing you all who have partaken in this journey or who will partake in it once it is sent to Perry and she uploads it to her YouTube channel. Go on it a second time at a time when you won't be disturbed. And then you'll see how much took place that you perhaps couldn't bring back this first time around. Go online, do whatever you have to get the Savior's Agenda in the Emerald Doorway and explore them for one reason, to regain your own direct experience of who and what you are and your purpose for existing, to be a trustworthy co-creator with the source behind all life. And I will say to you all, and thank Perry for having the courage to put this on, I'll see you all later. And then I will end this session.